Woo, what up, gang? What up, squad? It's your boy, Are You Theory? It's the realist, the coolest, the trillest young king. On YouTube platform as we speak. Welcome back for another lit banger, man. We got Hanu Mankind, Big Dolls, official lyrics meaning. All right, so um, I heard the song, heard the song multiple times. Go check out my reaction, whatever did. Very, very good on views for everybody, right? Um, marketing was crazy. So um, I just kind of wanted to get deep down into what all he was saying. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course, sometimes things go over your head. We human. Um, so he gonna break it down for us on this genius, uh, on this genius thing. I don't think y'all ever, if y'all ever seen it, but yeah, if y'all haven't heard it breaking down, it is. If you new, subscribe, like the video, comment some more bangers. If you don't feel like watching this reaction with me, um, go ahead and click the link in the video. I mean, in the description below, and you can watch it, you know, on your own type shit. You feel me? So let's go ahead and get it, man. The name is Hanu Mankind. I've seen people but I've been saying this around this whole time. Train the name online, and that's okay. It definitely comes off as humankind off of it when you read it in the beginning. It's an amalgamation. It's a bringing it together of two worlds. Hanuman is an important figure within my culture and within my society. Mankind is the rest of the world. So we just, you know, are the world together. Mankind. Big dog. Big dogs was fun, man. It came from a very honest place. My boy Call Me, shout out to my boy Call Me, who was the producer behind this, made me a beat. The energy was amazing. The power that it brought within me and out of him was just a beautiful thing to feel. The music video was, was just a coming together of people that care and wanted to push themselves. We just sat and came up with the idea of, you know, there's skirt and a whip. You can do the traditional skirt a whip, have some bad bitches on the side, throw some money around. We were just like, hey man, like if you skirt and a whip, why not do it inside of the well of death? Yeah. Wait a minute, get it how you live it. 10 toes in when we standing on business, I'm up. Big stepper, underground mm -hmm. method, top notch, top -notch hoes, get the, the most, not the lesser. As soon as I heard him say that, I lost my shit. Because I'm from Austin, Texas, baby. And if you've anywhere from Texas, most most Texas, you know top notch hoes get the most, not the lesser. Pimp C all day. You know what I mean? So many other rappers, you know, bit off of that. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and in a good way, obviously, you know. And when I heard that, it blew my mind. I said, nah, he got some juice. He got some juice in him. He ain't just whatever y'all call it, him, whatever. He got juice in him, you know. So, yeah, that was insane. For those who don't know, UGK was UGK. a very, very prominent an integral part of Houston music and just culture in general. Pimp C and Bum B, what they did for the city of Houston and what they did just generally in terms of... That's crazy. That's crazy. The stylistics and aesthetics, it cannot be recreated. It is second to none. It's Pimp C's line. Top notch hoes get the most, not the lesser, right? Pimp C was just ahead of his time, man. He believed in bringing the community together. He believed in putting aside all your petty beef. Focus on getting your money up. Focus on providing for yourself and your community and your family. Rest in peace to Pimp C. I think what he did and what he left behind is monumental. December 4th, 2007 will forever be a dark day in history. Straight terror, yeah, product of your errors. Pushing culture, baby, got that product you can measure. I come from a country that unfortunately has a lot of stereotypes and typecasts that have been placed within our communities. I don't believe that these are what define us, right? There's so much more to where I'm from. There's so much of tradition. There's so much of style. There's so much of beauty from where I'm from. That's how you push culture, though. Is he from India? Is that like why he can't say where he's from, like say India or wherever, Nick. You show them what the truth is. You show them what is reality. There's a side of this world that you have never seen and never experienced, and that is something that I would love to show you. Trendsetter, the one who get a wetter, swerving. Uh, why he ain't say nothing about that? Well, when I say oh, the one who get her wetter is when a man and a woman. Now I'm playing. <laughs> While I'm bumping Project Patter. Project Pat. Project Pat, three, six, Mafia. <laughs> I knew, God, bro, can you not cough in my face, please? I knew he had to be from down south or something because he said he brought up the, you know, Pimp C line. Then he said Project Pat. Project Pat from um, Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. Memphis, Tennessee. That's still south, you know? Pat is a pioneer. The style and the delivery oh, that this man has 
brought to the world. You can hear it in so much of music that you hear nowadays. What he and 36 Mafia did in terms of their sound and stylistics, in, in terms of so many things, there was a time period where they're on top of the world and I was there for it. Big shout out to Project Path for changing the world. I'm finna look up how old he is real quick. Hey, no, I'm not gonna ask Siri. Mm -hmm, yes. Cause I wanna know how old it, no, he was, he's 32? Oh, snaps. Dude, that boy is 32. He's my age. I'm 31. I'm about to be 32 in like a month or so. Can you, okay, watch out for my microphone. Don't touch my microphone, okay? But, um, that is insane. So, yes, we was all around for the Pimp C era. And, no, 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 no. And everything like that. So that, uh, shout out to him. Like this, man, for bringing this to music. What? Rolling through the city with the big dogs. Fuck the laws. Lawyer with me, we ain't got a car. Sell on silent, but the product end up hella loud. That's how you make the money pie for everyone involved. So rolling through the city with the big dogs is basically, I'm proud to be able to say that I did this with my boys from the ground up. We will continue doing it with my boys. These are my big dogs. This is the circle that you choose to keep. That's kind of what big dog symbolizes, right? I'm rolling through the city with the big dogs. Fuck the laws. We made our own rules. We made our own, you know, scenarios and we created our own future. And if you don't deserve a cut, then we gonna cut them off. My barber got me looking proper every single time. Fresh fade, getting faded on that top. I just got my hair cut today. <laughs> Shout out to my barber. I drive a whole, almost an hour to get my hair cut. Not an hour. Because what what the way the way I go, if I would have went, if I don't hit the toes, it's probably going to be close to an hour. But since I hit the toes, <coughs> uh, it's probably like 35 minutes. Still too long. Great. You ain't walking out alive smoking what we on. The long hair is actually a very new thing. Before all this, I had a very, very clean fade that I carried with pride and dignity. I had a great barber. <laughs> he said with pride and dignity. <laughs> Shout out to my boy, Ashik Bai. If people are around you that don't deserve a cut, you gotta cut them off. Just like my barber, make sure that I stay clean. Make sure that you cut out things that you don't need in your life, people or energies that you don't need in your life because these things will hamper your progress. And you know I got it put. Mm. For He's not lying, bro. I'm going through something right now that I feel like, I'm. you know, I thought the world was over. You know what I mean? It, it, it's separation, you know? And I'm like, honestly, something's telling me that it's gonna, like, Something's gonna be born out of it. Even though I'm separating from the woman that I love or whatever, something like, I feel like my career is just gonna go like skyrocket. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that she's bringing me down, but I just feel like sometimes you just either, I don't know, some things just gotta align and maybe that's just what it is. For my dreams to come true, I gotta separate from the one I love and have my success that way. And that's fine, because it's all about my kids at the end of the day. I gotta take my feelings out of it, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to provide for my kids and get them the life that I always wanted, you know what I'm saying? And myself as well, you know? So if I have to leave her or whatever, you know, whatever, I'm gonna make it happen. Because my channel gonna blow up and I'm gonna be as big as I, as I wanna be, you know what I mean? And that all starts with cutting, like you said, the right people and the right things off. Life because these things will hamper your progress. And you know I got it part for the ones who gone. All right, peace in your memory, we carry on. Mm. When I die, they will not bury me, not what I want. Mm. Burn my body, pour my ashes in the river, y'all. That's how hey. we knowing that the flow about to carry on. Throughout my journey and throughout a lot of my friends, we have lost a lot of good people along the way. A lot of what we do and how we do it is keeping their memories in mind. When you move, you must remember that maintaining the integrity not just for yourself but the people that were there and were rooting for you is very important so it's in your memories that we carry on when i die they will not bury me not what i want within my country and within my community cremation is a very consistent and real thing that we do right after passing we burn the bodies in a funeral pyre after the body is burnt, we pour the remnants, the ashes, into the a holy river, which basically symbolizes the moving on from this life to the next, right? The body is a vessel, but the soul will continue to move on. Reincarnation is a very real tradition and belief that we have over here. After this life, that. you move on to the next one. And I think that this process of cremation is to symbolize that. The remnants are placed into the river where it will flow on and continue into the cycle of life. See, immortality is a fallacy, I prove them wrong. The Southern family gonna carry me the way beyond. 
anything you've ever known, anything you've done. It is a brief glimpse of immortality. If you are true to your craft or your beliefs and what you pursue in this life, even when you are gone, a part of you will remain. Mm. Three. They ask me how you be like this, how you get like this, why you worry about it, hope, get up on my dick, uh. get up out the way. What you think this is? We ain't worried about it, ho. Watch me skirt the whip. People are way too focused hey. on how other people are doing their things, how people are Facts. getting their money, how people Facts. are pursuing their endeavors. How Facts. That's one thing I, I told myself. I'm gonna stop putting, like, stop putting worry on other people and uh, what they got going on. Like, I was like, I just said about me separating from my baby mom, for for my woman, whatever, when I'm college. I was like, man, she gonna find a nigga that's gonna do this, and she gonna probably find a nigga that's gonna do that. Man, it ain't my business. It ain't my problem. She could find a nigga that's. All everything, six foot six, you know, great, whatever, you know, great jeans, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Everything, you know, and that, and it's not my business. It's not my life. It's not my problem because I'm not looking for no nigga. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm probably going to find me something that I've been praying and wishing for and hoping for. You know what I mean? So, like, I got to stop trying to think for other people and try to put and, and stop putting myself in, a, in those positions because I'll be stressing myself out for nothing. Like, it's not my business. You get what I'm trying to say? Don't make other people's business your business unless it's your kids or something. How people are just going about their business. I feel like people need to relax on that and take care of your own thing. Get your money up. Provide for your family. Focus on what's important. Get up on my dick. <laughs> Swerving. Moving to the money like it's urgent. Hands on God so I'm in it like a surgeon. The skin color like the bourbon. A worldwide sign that we face close curtains. Whether it's here where I live, or whether it's across the world, a lot of people due to their, the way that they are perceived through their skin tone or their background, automatically assumptions are made, doors are closed, opportunities have been ended. I have experienced it. Many of my people have experienced it. Many of your people have experienced it. However, that doesn't like stop us from getting what racism? we're supposed to be getting. I'm yeah. proud of my heritage. I'm proud of my people. I'm proud of where I'm from, where our skin color is like the bourbon, right? But even within our community, there's layers to this. People are subjugated to a certain way of life and certain treatment by, you know, society at large that is unfair or that has negative implications on how we can move forward as a society. I hear yo, nothing's ever certain. Only thing that's promises that promises are broken. Thanks. Yeah. So we find ways to cope then. Only thing I'm breaking is her back with emotions. Woo. This is a worldwide uh, phenomenon. There are so many consistent instances of the people being promised this and that. The people being assured that these things are going to happen by people that are in positions of power, people that should be helping. But unfortunately, a lot of these promises are broken and the general population are the ones that have to suffer because of that. So because of that, you know, me and everybody else here, we're finding ways to cope, man. And sometimes to ease the pain within my heart, I need a break, a back or two. Baby girl, bring out the goodies. <laughs> In that case, I need to break a back or two. And everybody else here, we're finding ways to cope, man. And sometimes, to ease the pain within my heart, I need a break a back or two. Baby girl, bring out the booty, <laughs> snuck it in inside the hoodie. Yeah. Now we're turning up to boogie. In school, I used to fight the bullies. Now I'm fighting with the law. I guess some things don't leave you fully. These things don't change. It's a cycle. There are figures and authority figures that are constantly suppressing your movement. So. We fight that, man. It doesn't change. They try and push me, then they try and pull me. Bet I will not budge. If you doubt it, then just call my bookie. And my bookie taking bets. Profit size a profit when you know it's coming next. Like With the forces that are against you, they're gonna try and budge you. They're gonna try and push you left to right. But it is up to you to maintain the stability, maintain focus on what is important to you, right? And I bet you that they won't, they won't change me. It is my duty to stay to what I'm supposed to Suck do. And if you doubt that, you can call my bookie. You know, I can put you in touch with a good guy or two. And my bookie's taking bets because profit size a profit when you know what's coming next. This is just you betting on yourself, man. Make sure that, that if you on. believe in what it is that you oh do, rest assured, God. good things will come to you. But you must believe. Believe! The Well of Death is actually, I don't think it's actually an Indian event. Historically, it's been all around the world, but it is something that you, you see all across India because it is a very common carnival or circus act. They um, set up in, a, in an area for a month or two. You can see that because the structures are usually fucking very rickety. It's just to be able to make it quickly and then break it apart quickly and take it out. So when it comes to being in the car and the Well of Death, 
and actually performing this, 10 out of 10 in terms of an experience. But if I had to get inside the car again, I would need some time to prepare myself and get ready because it's not a joke. Damn, that's insane, man. Shout out to the dog, Hanu Mankind. I'm glad he broke that down for us. What do y'all think? Did y'all Un did did y'all even need to watch this or was this like you know very enlightening to y'all as well i don't know for me it was very enlightening i appreciate it definitely you know learn a lot about the song about him so y'all y'all let me know what y'all want man y'all want more hand new mankind y'all know what to do man hit that comment section below man and let your boy know until next time your boy d is out che you got something to say i i you want to see me a robot the 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 down down <laughs> yes, Paul Bon Bon. Good job, Paul. Yeah, it's a baby Bon Bon. Mm -hmm. Alright, guys. Alright, y'all be good. Alright, man. We on to the next one, man. We gone.